Hello and welcome back to another Dare to Game review. Today we will be going over the new Lord of the Rings game, the Lord of the Rings Gollum. And before I say anything at all about the game, bear in mind I am playing and reviewing this game as both a gamer and a huge Tolkien nerd. So there are multiple perspectives that I'll be taking. I did not receive the game for free, in fact I paid full price for it on Steam. I will not spoil the story at all during this video, so don't worry about that, and I will just stick to my own unbiased opinions based on my experience playing the game on my high-end PC. So let's dive on in. And the whole thing can be summed up by just one word. Oof. This game is an incredible misfire that I wholeheartedly cannot really recommend to anyone at all, at least not for more than $10 or so. The game is not good. If you look at it like an interactive story that you occasionally have to move around in, it's passable. But I would really just recommend watching the story on YouTube. Certainly do not waste 50 or $60 on this game. I don't want to be too harsh, because I'm sure some people cared about this project a lot, and probably worked pretty hard on it, but it was an incredibly stupid idea. Before I even get to reviewing the game past any of that, I just want to say this game should not have ever entered pre-production. Someone, somewhere along the line, should have asked if anybody actually wanted to play a stealth platformer as Gollum, and if that question had been earnestly asked, they would have never wasted any money or any effort on this insane boondoggle of a game. This is all coming from someone who is absolutely obsessed with Tolkien's Legendarium. I have played every single Lord of the Rings game ever, and I even like most of the bad ones, simply because I enjoy Lord of the Rings enough to carry them through. But when I heard about this game, I knew immediately it was an absolutely terrible idea that had no chance at all of being good. And despite knowing this, I still decided to buy it for full price and play it. That's how much of a Tolkien fanboy I am and my regret is immeasurable. Literally no single character in the entire Legendarium is a worse subject for a video game than Gollum. Some random hobbit or a nobody orc would have been a better idea. Gollum has absolutely no potential for a game like this. We know way too much about him, and he isn't a character that is naturally interesting from a gameplay perspective. The only way his character could possibly be interesting is to tell his story, which they are doing, and it's the only thing that will get me to finish this game. But as expected, the gameplay itself absolutely sucks. I have nothing against action-adventure games, and I love story-based games, but I only enjoy them if the gameplay is also good. Otherwise, I would rather just watch a movie or read a book. Games like this are an artificial slog between cutscenes, and that isn't even considering the fact that the game looks terrible. The art design, sound design, and overall graphical fidelity looks like an Xbox 360 era early access title. The game should, at all times, have a watermark that says pre-release alpha footage, because at least that would prevent me from wondering how this steaming hot pile of crap was ever released. And again, like I said, if the game was $5 to $10, I would not actually have a problem with it at all. It looks competitive for that price range, but full price is outlandishly insane for this game. Gollum himself looks really bad. He is way smaller than depicted in the Peter Jackson trilogy, which I would be fine with, as it is closer to his description in the books, but it is really jarring and off-putting in the game. For one thing, the orcs are substantially larger than him, much closer to the way that they were depicted in the Peter Jackson movies than to the way that they are described in the books. This makes Gollum's few and far between combat moments with the orcs incredibly hard to believe because he is so much smaller than them. Gollum also, for some reason, has a full head of hair, which is off-putting, and I assume it was a move to make him more approachable as a playable character. It's also relatively short which suggests that he has recently gotten a haircut, which also raises some weird questions. So paired with his rather short stature, his fresh new hairstyle, and the fact that he inexplicably has a six-foot crouching vertical jump, it's just incredibly jarring to play the game as Gollum. Everything else in the game is designed in a way that feels very Tolkien-esque. At least, I think that most of the clothing fits the book style pretty well. Except the orcs. A lot of the orcs have armor on that looks absolutely cartoonish and terrible. The orcs that are wearing little to no armor look fine, as the facial style and body models look pretty good, other than the graphical fidelity, which is, again, like the entire game, very bad. But the fully armored orcs look hilariously bad. Their armor is atrocious, and makes them seem far more whimsical than orcs should ever be. The basic gameplay loop of this game is a cutscene that actually shows a snippet of pretty interesting story, and then a bunch of menial tasks and repetitive 
boring platforming. I've only played through the first three or four chapters at this point, so who knows, maybe it becomes super fun later on, but I seriously doubt it. Most of the tasks are things like crawl through these three holes and put this rock in that barrel, or run around and pull these five levers. All in all, not exactly on the level of fetching some homeless guy's helmet from a cave somewhere. The basic story, which, at least so far, is mostly showing Gollum's captivity in Mordor, is actually pretty interesting. And as a Tolkien nerd, I quite enjoy the view into Lugburs and seeing what Sauron's lieutenants are getting up to. Also, there is at least a peek into the cult of worship around Sauron, which is interesting and fun to see. However, there are weird story beats that never play out, and things that will be mentioned once but seemingly go nowhere at all, which I'm not too nuts about. There are all the typical graphical bugs that half-baked games always have. Texture pop-ins, half-rendered faces, hair glitching through steel, people dropping into the floor, stuttering weird load screen flashes. I've yet to encounter a game-breaking bug, but there have been some weird bugs that I assume would stop a less experienced gamer dead in their tracks, so it is certainly not a smooth experience. On top of this, the cutscenes are super inconsistent, with some being rendered in at 30 FPS and others at 60 FPS. I don't know why this was done, but it is a little jarring. And like most stealth games, this one is terrible. I love stealth systems, where stealth is optional. I like to be able to choose to go in guns a-blazing, hacking down enemies with my sword, or to choose to stealthily sneak around carefully taking out enemies, or avoiding them entirely. I absolutely hate games where they lock you into trying to sneak around on endless tail missions, jumping from shadow to shadow only to be spotted by path-locked enemies on look timers only to then have to restart and do it all over again, pounding my head against the proverbial wall of bad game design. This game is loaded with that crap, and it is exactly the opposite of fun and or engaging. It drags the game to a screeching halt and totally ruins even the tiniest iota of fun that the game could have been, if not for anything else than for the interest in the story. So if you like incredibly poorly designed Assassin's Creed style tailing missions, but without the ability to actually assassinate people, Maybe you will love this game. So like I already said, I have two perspectives on this game, but neither one of them can honestly recommend it to anyone. As a Tolkien fan, I am interested in the story, and I will finish the game to experience it, but I doubt it will be worth the price they are asking, when it will likely be far more enjoyable to just watch all the cutscenes on YouTube. As a gamer, I do not enjoy the gameplay at all and all I see is sloppy work and a half-baked game that really should have never been considered, much less made. If the game ever gets down to the $10 or less area, then I recommend checking it out. But other than that, my advice would be to avoid it at all costs. In the world of Tolkien, you have men, elves, and dwarves, all of which have insane amounts of lore, history, impressive abilities, and endless potential for great story-based games or an open-world sandbox adventure. If you want to make a good Lord of the Rings game, why on earth would you avoid the low-hanging fruit and go for something as painful and doomed to failure as a stealth platformer where you play as Gollum? An open-world hack-and-slash where you play as some Brelander, or even a linear stealth game where you play as a wood elf would have been infinitely better than this, and likely way easier to make than this one was. Keep it simple, stupid. But that's where I'm going to leave it for today. In summary, oof. Don't buy this game. In any case, though, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful, and or entertaining. But that's where we're going to leave it. Have a nice day, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching another Dare to Game video. If you liked this video, please leave a like and a comment. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you like my content and would like to support this channel, consider becoming a member today for as little as $1.99 a month. It makes a huge difference. But in any case, thanks for watching and have a nice day. I'll see you next time.